Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, let me first of all sincerely apologize for not being able to address you in person in Brussels. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you about our recent visit to Ukraine with the Polish and Czech Prime Ministers and about the situation in Ukraine in general. Our visit was meant primarily as an expression of our solidarity with Ukraine. We do care, we want to help, we will not abandon Ukraine or leave it to fend for itself. We must demonstrate this not only with words, but also with deeds, with concrete actions. Ukraine needs four things, a hope, modern weapons, money and humanitarian aid. We have to do everything we can to strengthen Ukrainian defense and to make Russia weaker. Most important element of our visit to Ukraine was to offer Kiev a strong message of hope. Our full support of Ukraine's European perspective and its desired membership in the European Union. Nobody is fighting as hard for real European values as and uh, our way of life as Ukrainians are right now. In Kiev, we received first-hand information about the situation in Ukraine. Being there physically differs greatly from observing events at a distance. What we see on screen is often not the same as what is actually happening. We have felt the energy among the people on the ground and have seen how the Ukrainian nation and its political class stand firmly behind the Ukrainian president and government and talks with the Ukrainian leadership revolt around important topics, in particular sanctions, aid to Ukraine, military aid, the future of Ukraine after the war, and the framework for lasting peace. We have heard highlighted that an ambitious plan for helping Ukraine after the war is already being drafted with the framework of the OECD. However, the most important thing at this moment is how to help Ukraine effectively defend itself. Time is of the essence. Every day hundreds of lives are lost and immense suffering is being inflicted on the people of Ukraine. After talking to the Ukrainians, it became clear to me that they will not give up, even though they are facing unprecedented human suffering. Russian strategic goal of taking over Ukraine and installing a puppet government started failing from the outset. It must not be achieved and it will not be achieved. I am very much aware of how the Ukrainians are feeling these days. Slovenia was in a similar situation three decades ago when we proclaimed our independence and the Yugoslav communist army attacked us. We too have fought for our freedom, our independence and our lives. Every expression of solidarity, every gesture of support during that challenging time meant a great deal for us. In the humanitarian situation within the Ukraine today is extremely worrying. Russia is flagrantly violating all its obligations under international humanitarian law. When trying to understand Putin's motivations for attacking Ukraine, there are some possible reasons apart from those already widely reflected, reflected upon. Putin also attacked Ukraine because it is the European country with the largest reserves of uranium ore, the largest amount of fertile soil and the second largest reserves of titanium ore. Ukraine also has the third largest reserves of shale gas and it is the third largest producer of nuclear energy in Europe. Furthermore, Ukraine is an important country on a global scale. It has the world's second largest reserves of iron ore as well as the second largest reserves of manganese ore and the seventh largest reserves of coal. In terms of mineral resources, Ukraine is the world's fourth richest country. Additionally, it has the third largest area of fertile black soil in the world and owns 25% of the world's most fertile land. The country is currently the third largest exporter of grains in the world and has the potential to produce food for 600 million people. 
Dear friends, for centuries, dictators have invaded neighboring countries in order to steal their wealth and strengthen themselves. After invading a neighboring country, they continued on. Anyone who thinks that indulgence towards Putin would, would satisfy his current lust for conquest and thus deter him from further aggression has not heeded the lessons to be learned from history. Ukrainians are prepared to abandon their NATO aspirations because they need NATO now, not after they win the war. However, at the same time, they want very firm institutional guarantees and they see these guarantees inside the European Union. Ukrainians have been cheated in the past, particularly in 1994, when the great powers signed the Budapest Memorandum by which Ukraine agreed to relinquish its nuclear arsenal. The great powers then assured Ukraine its territorial integrity and political sovereignty. In the last two decades, we have seen that no one has kept th these promises. And the Ukrainians are not going to buy the same promises they need, so they need very firm security guarantees outside of NATO. As regarding Ukraine's EU membership that they applied for, I believe that the fast-track procedure is necessary. The EU's procedural, administrative and institutional framework should be adapted to this task. This is a question of hope. And massive financial resources need to be mobilized to assist the process. We are confident that the EU's rich experience with various enlargement waves and processes should ensure that we are ready to take on this historic challenge and responsibility. Let me finish by stressing once again, Ukraine is a European country. Its rightful place is within the European Union. For the last two years, we have been discussing on importance of European values, uh, mostly a theoretical debate. Then suddenly, we realized that those fundamental European values actually exist and that they are threatened. In Ukraine, they are under attack and Europeans are defending them with their lives in Ukraine. This was the moment when we inside of the European Union started to finally wake up, to become more united than ever. The Ukrainians are not only defending their homeland and Europe as a ter territory, but they are defending the very core of basic human values, the freedom especially. Let us continue to help Ukrainians. Let us stand with them at every moment. This aggression may drag on for some time, but the Russian war machine is not as immensely powerful as some had imagined. Our solidarity and assistance must preserve and should be strengthened further. We must never forget the, uh, what has happened in these days. Let us do everything in our power to ensure that Ukraine endures because Ukraine is fighting for us is fighting for us too. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for all your preparedness to help Ukraine. Thank you.